There's always a buzz to a record release party. It's the anticipation, the expectation of big sales to come. But at this party, the vibe is decidedly different. Whatever happens with this album, just the fact it was made and the man who made it is alive to launch it is enough. I was playing up in Aurelia and, and the next thing I knew, it was Saturday afternoon and I was on the floor and uh, they took me to the, to the emergency in Aurelia. This was on the September the 8th, 2002. This is your seat here. Okay. And I'm Gordon Lightfoot was in a coma for five weeks and has been in and out of hospital ever since. Only now is he well enough to sit down and talk about what happened. Gordon Lightfoot, it's a pleasure to meet you. And I'm sure it's a thrill for your fans watching to see you, probably for the first time since you were sick and looking so well. Well, thank you very much. I'm uh, fighting my way back. Yeah, as, as I these, understand, these days, yeah. for those who will want reassurance, let me begin with this question. Are you completely out of danger now? Out of danger, yes. I, I don't know if I really ever was after, but the first day. But uh, I'm, I'm working my way back now, and it's taken a long time, but it's... Uh, I'm back into practicing again, and uh, we've had some rehearsals and uh, are looking forward to it. I mean, the challenge would be to try to get back onto the stage again. The health scare that you had, the ruptured artery in your abdomen, from what I understand, it's usually fatal. But why do you think uh, you, you escaped the fate that most people who have that condition? They said it was because of conditioning, and in in for about the last 25 years, I have... I felt that I owed this to my fans and I've always tried to stay in good condition and I've uh, uh, worked out about 150, 120 times a year and uh, got really qu quite religious about it there for a while. What has kept you going through this long fight back? Well, uh, you know, we're, we're, we, we won't, uh, I won't mince words with you, we're, we have a, a, a new CD uh, which we've been working on practically the whole time. So working on the post-production of that and the way in which it was done, which is described in the, the album's liner notes, with me being in the hospital and how would you make an album and all that kind of stuff, uh, I had all of the vocal and the, and the guitar parts were finished before I fell ill. So again, it's always been about the so, music. So that's what we use. So I started thinking about that like right away within about 10 days from the time I woke up which was around Halloween in, in 2002, and I went down like in the, at the end of the first week of September. So, uh, And you were, as you said, able to supervise the production of this disc So, so it took my, my mind off my condition the whole time, you see. So I'm a very lucky person because I was so busy thinking about making this record, which I spent about 14, 15 months doing. Um, I, it, I really didn't have time to think about my condition, so I was very lucky that way. I don't think it's an understatement to say that every Canadian my age has a personal connection to your music, has some favorite Gordon Lightfoot song that really carries special meaning. Of all of your body of work, which are the songs that you hold most dear? Uh, I, I, I think the Canadian Railroad Trilogy is a good one, and uh, I really like Early Morning Rain a lot, and it's been recorded by lots of other artists, too, I might add. But I, I like If You Could Read My Mind, and... Uh, and I, I really like Beautiful and I, uh, a lot too, but The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, I think, is my, my all-time favorite because I know how it feels to play it uh, in a room full of people. And they really love it, and it's a, it's a wonderful song to play. If I turn on the television now, I'm going to hear music from everybody to Led Zeppelin, to Queen, to Bob Dylan, used on television commercials to sell just about everything. And yet I don't hear your music. You hold tight to your music. Why are you so protective of your music in that way? Well, uh, maybe, maybe we don't get, to get the offers that they do, but we do get some, and I usually turn them down because it's really, uh, it doesn't seem significant enough, you know. Uh, sundown for a beer company in the States. Uh, I, I said, no, I don't think I want to do that. I don't want the, the beer commercial to be my appetite. We're about two meters away from the stage on which you've given some legendary performances over the years. Yes, this, this, uh, this place I sang here first when I was 13 years old. And uh, how important is it for you to one day be back on that stage performing? Very important. This is where our, our friends and relatives live. We have to be right, right on the ball. We're like the home team, you know, be, be on for the, for the hometown folks. It's very important. And when do you think we can look forward to that? Uh, I, I would say probably uh, sometime 
next year. I know you had a tracheotomy, and I know you've had, as you said, your medical procedures, and they have to have done some serious damage to those important singing abdominal muscles. How is your voice? The voice, uh, there's nothing wrong with the voice at all. It's, uh, the voice is fine. Have you started to sing again? Uh, I've, I've made some attempts with my... Uh, I've been working with a couple of the musicians, the bass player and the lead guitar player, and we've, we've started having some rehearsals. And the vocal, the vocal seems to be... It's still hiding in there, but I know it's going to spring forth one of these days because it almost has. Most of the, the problem is, is below at the abdominal muscles because I now have like a completely different set of muscles controlling my abdomen than I had before. What happened? the very first time you tried to sing after your illness? Well, I, I, I felt pressure down here, but as it heals, it, it, uh, it's, it's not flat like it used to be, but it, it's still, I can, I can feel it pushing the voice out, so I know it's going to be okay. We'll be able to do something, and I'm, I'm going to get a chance to prove it, too, before too much longer. But you're still working at it, and the amazing thing is it's hard to wrap your head around the one, my head around the idea that Gordon Lightfoot is now a pensioner because you're 65 years old now, <laughs> and you're still as vital as always. You have earned the right. You've won everything there is to win. You've earned the right to sit back and relax and enjoy your success. But how much appeal does that hold for you now? Well, I, you know, I want to be like... Uh, uh, you know, like like Wilf Carter and Stop and Tom and Willie Nelson, and just do it just for as long as is, is humanly possible. So if that means I, I'm still doing it, uh, performing when I'm 70, well, that's just fine by me. I'll be quite happy with that.